hello guys welcome back to my channel today i'm going to show you something really really cool inside of camera tracking in blender so guys this thing i want to show you is something you will always see right here the keyframe a and keyframe b so what if i tell you that this keyframe a and keyframe b is kind of the most not really the most but one of the most important key you must know inside of blender and this is a key for a really better solve of your camera tracking okay now let's get to the video so when i started learning blender i always thought of this all this be an automatic way of doing things like doing camera tracking just go ahead and one of the button then click it then the tracking is done i've always been lazy of how things really are and how i should really do things because i just want everything to be just fast 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 and i should get the result that people we take the time to get that's all what I want. So later on, I started realizing that there's nothing like that. I just have to put on the work, then do the hard work myself. So this track you see right there is not doing like it's not like it's not like it's a manual track. It's kind of automatic track when you just go to your track here and just detect fixtures and just pack all bunch of tracking data for you. They track. So this is kind of I've made a tutorial on this before. So this is like a auto track in blender it's not like a manner tracking but if i want to do something like a match mood for this a correct match room that i want to create geometry for the same i will not do it this way that's it i will just make sure i track one point then make sure that this track really really good throughout the shot okay so for this topic this is what we are going to do this is camera track and I will not do anything else to this, just a bunch of camera track. So what I want to do now is to put some information about this camera for Blender to be able to solve this properly. Okay, so when I come here to this camera here, I just open it. So we have sensor width, we have pixel, we have lens, we have everything. So what I will first do is to put my sensor width, which I know the sensor width of this camera that I shot with. So I'm going to put that there, which is 23.5. So you can Google it your camera settings you can google it and you see your sensor width you can see everything about your details of the camera so you can put it that here so it's important to put these settings here so the camera so that blender can work perfect with solving so the next thing i will put is the lens so this lens that i showed with is 35 i know for sure that it's 35 so i've got to put this here which is 35 millimeter lens so that is done so the next thing i will just come to the solve here then first thing i will do just to turn off this keyframe so that blender can calculate everything for us i will just click on soft camera motion so you just have to wait for blender to calculate everything for us. okay now now the solve is done and you can see the solve error i'm getting here which is 86.6 which is not really really good to use you can see the curve here this blue line you can see how the curve is rough, very, very rough, and it's supposed to be a very straight line right there. So, upon all the information I give to this blender, and it's still not giving me a good camera solve. And mind you, this shot you are seeing right here is already been distorted. I've already removed the lens distortion from it with another software. So, instead of that, I'm still getting this bad track. So, it's not that this tracking is really bad itself, but the way Blender does these things is kind of different because it's a computer. This where the skin frame A and skin frame B comes in. Like this skin frame A, we just have to turn off it. Then we need to input our own key frame A and B manually. So before we do that, I want just want to clean off some bad track before I continue that. So when you look here, you can see that we are having some bad tracks over here, which is affecting the track also. So we have to clean them off, and we just we don't have to really do much. Just click on them and delete it. You can click on them and delete it or just put your cursor right here just click here to put the keyframe center here then you delete all the frame next to it so i just click here then delete all the frames. so i don't want to delete so much of track but at least i will delete some bad ones so just like a clean up of your track so it's better you do this manually instead of doing it automatically because we have an auto way of doing this which is clean up here i will still get into that i've made some videos about that in the past so you can check my videos on how to use them but it's really worth it when you do your thing manually okay so let's just leave that for now and let's talk about this keyframe a and keyframe b and what they really really does so this keyframe a and keyframe b what blender is trying to tell you is that 
you should it's blender is trying to look for a where we can have more parallax in this scene you can see this scene you won't have an equal parallel in all these shots it's not possible so we have to look for a where a place there where we can find more parallax in this shot like let's look from here which is the frame one when you look at this frame one we can, we can see that we have more parallax in this scene especially this place you can see where the camera move aside we have more parallax in that scene you can see it's, we have more parallax here this is where the camera moves more better than the rest of the shot you can see here if you look at here so the camera we have more parallax here so both at least this is where i think we have a better parallax okay so what i'm going to do now is to input this from here where i think i have more parallax so i'm going to choose from frame 9 to let me just check I'm going to be put from frame 9 to frame 50. So let me do that. 9 will be a keyframe A, then 50 will be a keyframe B. So what I'm going to do now is to solve this again and see what happens. Now you can see that after putting that, I have more, more better result. You can see here that you can see how drop we have in this curve and you can see that this track is becoming more better you can see that so we need to also look up to our track to see where we see have a bad tracks like here the curve is really bad there so we have to clean them so you can see that this is how this keyframe a and keyframe b works you should look for a pair a place where the palace is more more accurate and where is where it should be your keyframe a and keyframe b you can see that this is really really nice to have something like this and it's better you know this thing because you might just be doing tracking tracking solving solving and still have a bad track despite all your hard work on it so you still have a bad track so i'm going to look at, onto it and maybe i should re reduce this keyframe b a bit which is let me say 30 for now then solve this again You can see that this thing is coming down a bit over here so let me just put it from one let's see what we get all right you can see how this smooth our track is right now you can see that with this you might able to do a much more with this shot i don't i can't really really say but it's better you do your thing manually and check on the track whether it is worth it so now what i'm going to do now is just to go on with this track then i'll just create the same Set as background first of all i'll just set track to same you can see so i'm going to set my background which i will pick three track i'm going to pick from forward bear then on front then i will choose this you just have to split it you can see that i choose background middle ground and foreground that's a better way of picking the floor so i'm going to set floor you can see that this is really setting this as a floor so i'm going to pick one as the origin i'll just choose this one as the origin you can see how this thing is in the same so i'm going to go to the layout so this is what we have in the layout just if you are not seeing your track you just go up here then show motion track you can see how this thing is if you look at this track you can see that we are even seeing more better of this where we can create our geometry with this point so you can see that we have more points in depth you can see all this track at the back so with this type of track we can really create our geometry from this and create of our scene with this track but I can't really guarantee you that it will be more accurate when you just do it something you do manually yourself and that is more better in doing it than doing it like this so we still have a better track I can think that we can do let me just check So I just want to create the same real quick just to see what we are seeing here. All right, so you can see that this thing, the orientation of this thing is not really accurate when you look at it. It's not really accurate. So this is what you can do manually. Just select all the same. Go to the camera view, select the camera like this. Then what you can do is to find a better frame like so. Then r then x to so rotate in the x axis you can see that the scene is rotating so this is how to do it all right so i'm going to pick this then drag it up 
this is how I recreate my geometry just have to eyeball it then just to do it manually so if you look at this edge you can see that this is really sticking so that's edge and this is how you create your geometry so I will still do a tutorial on this properly where you can know how to do this yourself okay guys this is all about this tutorial I hope you like this tutorial and you learn something good about this so thanks for watching and I will see you guys in my next video